everyone today i'm going to be doing predictions for the semifinals of the never used premier league and i'm going to start off with the first set of matchups the marshanas versus the yellow list so the first matchup is gxc versus kushalos um these past few weeks i've been impressed i've been liking the um Heliolis games a lot. I think um this week they're still forced to run Dragalgy. Well, I don't know. Pensionator didn't like specify um whether this is Dragalgy meta in the last two weeks or it's a completely new meta, you know, in the last two weeks. But I've been really impressed with how the Heliolis have been building. But I also have been impressed with um, what the Marshawnics have been cooking up. Like la the last two weeks, the well, last week, I think it was last week, the Helios made like a encore, a encore um, Snorlax set, and it completely just set team confide. It co like it was Kushalos versus confide, and that Snorlax pretty much just won the matchup. So, Encore on Snorlax, and they brought Protect Snorlax last week. And, um, Encore Snorlax is a nice substitute Dragology counter. However, um, I've seen the Mershanas bring, um, Savali Steel before. And Savali Steel, it was like a Sword Stance, Multi Attack, Rest and Sleep Talk, um, Savali Steel. So, both teams are capable of creating, you know, anti techs or text against the meta but um in terms of gxc and kushlos i'm going to go with kushlos because i think kushlos is trying to pick up on well recently i just been i've just been liking up how he's been performing recently i think gxc i don't think um gxc this is gxc's first like premier league and kushlos has been has been in like the past two premier leagues like only thing I've been seeing was like improvement from Kushlos. Like their first, like their first never used Premier League tour, I seen Kushlos in. Um, they went negative. The snake that snake draft, I think they went like three to four or even. So, and now I just I just feel like they're just improving their performance every team tour, and they're just trying to win this team tour, you know. So I'm going to go with Kushlos. I've just been really impressed with what the Pillars have been um, bringing. Well, what Kushlos has brought the past two weeks. Um, Confide versus Total Doggo. I think Confide is obviously the better player. Total Doggo could um pick up to, could build some creative stuff to throw Confide off guard. Confide is a um never used he won circuit the never used circuit before, so I am gonna vote Confide here. I think um Confide can build some good stuff also. And Confide is pretty flexible in terms of, I think they play SS and SM. So, I'm just going to go with Confide. Confide has more, way more team tour experience than Turtle Doggo. And I think um, they can make more, like, more aggressive plays or even, you know, just the right plays during the game. And plus, this is a semi-final, so Confide is going to take this a little more seriously. OVB versus PDT. Still mad because I missed my head smash against PDT. So, um, but based off that game, I haven't been watching P PDT that much, but I don't think they've been in SS consist consistently every single week. But reflecting off my game with PDT, um, like something, o OBB could bring something that's going to throw PDT off. PDT doesn't, you know, main this tier. So, you know, OBB is a creative builder. So, anything that's not common or, you know, not in a smoking dex. So, like, Twitch Scarf Tyrantrum, that's not, a, that's not a smoking dex set. And it's not like, oh, Roxy is going to bring Choice Scarf Tyrantrum. But, you know, like, if I'm, like, I'm going to put myself in the Mershana shoes. Like... Rocks like Tyrantra runs Choice Band and Dragon Dance, so your talent flame could U-turn on this Tyrantra. You know, it just like those. You just have to be careful with um with the text and stuff. But I think OVB could just out tech 
um, the Marshawnless here and throw PDT off guard. But I think PDT, if PDT plays enough test games and actually, you know, you know, put their time in and learning like the sneaky stuff, they could win this game, you know. But OVV is just a nice creative builder. Luthier and Alpha Rabbit, um, I think this was a um, hyper offense screens game. They played each other before, and uh, Alpha Rabbit they choked they choked in the Usum game. Um, I think Alpha Rabbit has only been in for like three weeks in Usum, so Alpha just Alpha Rabbit just has to be aware of you know the mechanics and not not choke the game. Because it was a minor. They oh, yeah, it was a minor. And they tried to will o the minor. And shields down. That blocks all the status. So, um... I'm not sure. Though Alpha Rabbit being an SM. And then... I think this is a stronger lineup. Alpha Rabbit. I'm not saying Alpha Rabbit is better than Eternally. But this is the... I think this is... The Hilula's best lineup. Nah. So I just I just I'm gonna go with Luthier here. I just trust him. Like lately Luthier has been um Luthier is in a BOT. They they won the um SS. They won Grand Slam. The SS Grand Slam. They're just a they're just a good rising player. Luthier reminds me of like Sensei Aksu or Kapod, anyone that wins a uh, like a team tour, like a huge team tour, it's like, oh, your name gets thrown out. So I just feel like Luthier is not is not a person that's gonna be easy to you know lose. Like you can't you can't just say, okay, let's throw this together, and yeah, this set seems Luthier. Like Luthier can find a way to win the game. But you know, I, this is gonna be a close one, regardless. Alpha Rabbit is a good player after all, but Luthier has been in. Uh, weeks consistently you know back to back to back to back so i'm gonna go with luthier here oris kayo versus eternally everyone has been using eternally's teams and guidance pretty much every team tour because well that's except like splash but um eternally just knows um sm and oris a lot i think kayo um Kayo is a uh, he played he played Usum before and he was a uh, forum moderator. So these are just two boomers going at it. I think Kayo can build some creative stuff though. If Etern it just depends if Eternally is building and actually doing their prep. Because I know um well I don't think Eternally is prepping at all. Eternally might not be prepping at all. But Kayo Kayo, not Kayo, but Eternally was ready to like, you know, no John's Kayo. And, you know, Kayo declined. So, Kayo must be, um, you know, really trying and trying to win this tour. It's nothing wrong with reusing. It is Oris. Oris is stale. This is the semifinals. But, I think I, I just I can't I can't vote against eternally like it's just everyone goes to eternally eternally you know I think eternally has this in the bag okay Shekel King versus Annoyer Annoyer I was I went past I went back to like the 2017 I think it was 2014 2013 VW posts and I was looking at Annoyer's like I was look I was looking at Annoyer's per posts because I'm like, okay, what was you running back in the day? And then I seen them run uh, Chesto wrote on Foss um, creative set that they posted back in 2013, 2014. So I'm just like, okay, I need to get an idea of how Annoyer builds. And Annoyer builds consistent um, teams. Shuckle King. Um, Shuckle King is kind of like um, a me build. Like, they built creatively. Like I built BW creatively, but last week, I think it was last week. I don't know. I wasn't really impressed with how Shuckle was piloting the matchup. 
it was against Quasile. Yeah, I wasn't um, I wasn't like you know impressed with how Shuckle King was navigating that matchup. I think Annoyer has been consistent throughout the tour. Tour. Yeah, I think Annoyer has been consistent throughout the tour, and they have a grip on the tier. But these are still two um old gen players going at it. So. You know, Shuckle King has posts in 2013, but I look at Anoya's for a second. Anoya has been in all these projects, hosts this project, been in this tour, this, 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 this. You see Anoya, know your name in this BW sub forum, and I see a little bit of Shuckle King. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with Anoya here. Hey Sawa, I remember Hey Sawa going like um, seven to zero, like seven to zero. Um, and one of our NU tours in the past, and this is the this is the semifinals. Like Heisawa is Heisawa is not going to um, lose this, but Heisawa has been. Um, I think their record has been decreasing in the past few team tours. Like I remember, I remember Staxi, like six Staxi. Staxi went like six to zero in one team tour, and now they're going like three to five or like. Four to four, and you know the past few teams for us. And Heisawa is still kind of up there. I think I'm not sure what Heisawa's record is. I don't. They're not. I don't think they're not seven to zero. They're definitely not seven to zero. Because Baraldin who has the best DDP record this tour. But um, I'm going to go with Heisawa. Heisawa has a lot of um experience with DDP. I'm not really sure. How much Vivalo Squad knows it's here? How much co he contributes to this here? I and Giso is a support. They signed up for DDP, so maybe Giso is supporting DDP, or Vivalo is um using something like that. But I think Sal just knows it's here from the back of their head. So Giso versus Rosie Bear, both both of these players have been kind of out in and out of this tour. Like Giso went like. Zero to two, um, starting this tour, and then they just got benched, or they just didn't want to play um, anymore. Rosie Bear, they only just got in at the week seven, but well, week six or week seven. But Rosie Bear did pop off the last two weeks with um, with their ADV teams. Giso has went. Um, Giso is like. You still had a great work record these past these past two tours. So they went like seven to zero and eight to zero. It's just like wow, you know, like it's just like these two tours back to back, and you went you did like so amazing in ADB, and then the Mershanas retained them for ADB. But it's just like okay, well, it's like you went zero to two. I understand the bench is like, okay, I need a timeout. I went to zero to two. So I'm just, it's just questionable. Are you ready to, you know, win this tour? You're in the semifinals. But be, both of these players have been in and out of this tour. It's not like Jiso is versus Veraldi, who, who, who is the 8 to 0 person or the 7 to 0 person. Well, no. Yeah, 7 to 0 person in this tour. So both of these players have. A equal experience pretty much in terms of playing this tour so um I just I I have to go with Jiso here I'm I'm really impressed I'm still impressed with their record in the past two tours I think they're gonna pop off like they're gonna make up for those losses they got done on the Marshanas but I don't think the Marshanas have lost a single week like, yeah, the Mershanas have, um, tied, like, tied some weeks, and that's okay. But as long as those, as long as you get, like, those eight points, you're pretty much guaranteed for playoffs. So, one, two, three, four. So, I have five on Healerless, and three on Mershanas. Okay, Plumes versus Machamps. I'm going to start with SS. So ZS versus Star, ZS, ZS, ZS versus Star is kind of like OBB versus PDT, like um, Mainer versus Tor player, like 
ZS brought uh, Drudagon versus um, Star, and that pretty much just six to zero on preview. Like Drudagon, it was choice band outrage, and what what Drudagon did was it utilized what people were running in the meta. Like people was running so much fat, like like Snorlax and Escavalier and um, not even not even defensive Escavalier. It's like specially defensive Escavalier and Dragology. So that choice band um, Drudigon was good against the Machamps because the Machamps like like spamming the um, like spamming Dragology. Yeah, Dr the Machamp spams Dragology and Machamp a lot. Machamp is in our name. You're supposed to be you're supposed to be prepping for Machamp. So. <laughs> But yeah, um, yes, um, hat brought choice band, um, Drudagon, but Star, I feel like Star is going to be a little bit more committed to winning, and you know they're probably Star. I'm just, I'm so mad, cause Star, Star had, um, Star got lucked in, in the um, big tour, and then they had to get, they just dead gamed against Confide, and that's okay. That is okay. But right now, I think Sar is not going to lose to ZS. It's time to like, hey, what 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 crazy stuff this person about to bring? Who is this ZS person? I'm going to win this. We going to win this avatar. Come on, my champs. Champs need to pull it together. Uh, this is tough. But I'm just, I'm going to go with Star here. I can't, I can't, I can't vote against Star. Okay, but ZS is a great builder. Okay, Mints versus Ziri. Um, Mints has... Okay, both of these players are not... I don't think they're super familiar with SS. Mints started out with Usum, but then they switched to SS, so I assume they've been... A pro have a better performance in the current gen never used as compared to SM, or they might just be supplying SM teams and they wanted a better battler in the SS slot. Um, I just look at the plumes and uh, I mean when I think of the plumes, it's just like ZS, like some creative stuff. I feel like the plumes might build some creative tech to throw Ziri off, and the champs have been pretty straightforward. Their builds aren't. Um, I don't think my, the Machamp's builds have been bad. It's just like I don't like I don't like calling people's teams bad. It's more I like I like labeling it as creative builds versus like standard builds. So like creative or like standard. I think the Plumes have been using more creative builds, and the Machamp's have been using more straightforward and standard builds. But I think the Plumes might build some creative stuff for Mints to throw Ziri off, like, um, they brought, they, they gave Mints last year, um, versus Floss one time. I didn't like, I didn't like the team that much, but last year was pretty good in the, me in, like, the general medicines, because last year is, like, anti-wish, so, I'm gonna bold Mints here. I think Mints is the, uh, better player here, also. So SS Gum versus TJ. Um, I kind of, I just kind of use this same idea of the creative builds and uh, how both players are kind of unfamiliar with the tier. Um, Gum just has to be careful with their, with just the, you know, just the man. Just Gum has to be careful. I feel. As long as, as long as Gum practices the T, they should be good, like, like, it's just like, the stage fright, like, don't, don't be clicking, relax, we got this Gum, okay, and the same thing for TJ, like, you can't, you can't throw your win con out, like, both of these players, um, this is, I feel that, like, this, this matchup is pretty even, like, I feel like either side could, like, say if TJ has, like, that priority, like, TJ has to make sure you keep that pressure up, or, and, you know, keep that pressure up, and 
test those games. Same thing for Gum. Keep that pressure up. Don't throw your win con out. We're unfamiliar with the tier, but if you put that effort in, this will be a really good matchup. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna vote versus here. So I think that's pretty even. So SM versus AV Rice versus Rob Jr. Um, Rob Jr. started off this tour a little weak. But the most recent weeks, they've been a little bit more consistent with their wins. Like, um, Rob Jr. went like 0-3 to zero to three or 0-2. to two. They got benched for a week or two. And they came back went like 2-0 to zero and 3-0. to zero. So, Rob Jr. feels like, okay, Rob Jr. hit it. Like, ran into a wall. And they got, they, they, they sat down. They said, okay, I need, to get, I need to take a nap and relax. And... Rob Jr. got up, got his energy drink, and said, hey, we got a tournament to win. So Rob Jr. has been popping off these last two weeks. And Rob Jr., I think Rob Jr. is, I'm going to I'm going to vote Rob Jr. Rob Jr. knows his tier. Rob Jr. has been in past never used Premier Leagues. I feel like he's more committed to this tier also. So Ava Rice, they have meant to support some. And we, I, I, I had built a uh, Usum team versus the Pooms. And our problem was, I think our problem was bringing Miss Magius like every single week. So we brought Miss Magius every single week. I got set team with the uh, alone executor. So Rob Jr. just has to make sure they don't get set team by something crazy. Like, but Rob Jr. knows this tier, like, Rob Jr. knows this tier. He should be able to um, capitalize on all the weird stuff and cheese proof, check proof, do whatever you need to get that win for the Machamps. Or Splash was just um, Titania. Um, last week, um, we brought Rain versus Titania. And um, I noticed that the water resist like it wasn't no gashadon it wasn't no mantan pelipher so chaitanya does not have any patterns chait doesn't build this tier i don't think anyone on the machamps exactly builds auras unless they have support for the unless they have support for the semifinals but the machamps have to the machamps just have to be careful with the Patterns, especially with, like the defensive Pokemon they're bringing, just to switch it up. Splash is just uh, amazing. I've been really impressed with Splash building ores. And I think Splash was just 3K. Like when I when I started off, um, when my when I was doing my draft plan, I was like, hey, I need a really creative ores builder, and I'm just so I'm so sad that Splash was not in my initial draft plans because I think when they were now in Splash I was like yo Splash signed up and then you know I I didn't have that much money left anyway at least that's how I think it went but either way Splash went like 3k and this guy was yeah Splash has been on paper on the record sheet yeah they might have some losses but you have to look at the matchups the actual matchups and see that Splash has been luck the majority of this tour. Like, Splash has been building some really creative stuff this entire tournament. I think Splash can, um, I think Splash can build something really creative in Oris. So, I'm just really so excited to see what Splash brings because you know Oris has been known for being like stale or whatever. So, I think Splash kind of switches that up. Um, BW versus Toki versus Ninja Dog. Um, this is Ninja Dog's first. Um, this is Ninja Dog's first BW Indie tour, I think. Well, the, okay, it might not be his first, but this the first this year, first in the past one or two years. So they're against Toki. Toki, um, Toki is not a boomer in his tier, but Toki is confident. Toki was just randomly drafted for BW in any snake draft and they they um it went like seven to zero. Six to zero, seven to zero. So Toki is 
So he has an idea, like something, you know, has a um, good idea of what to bring. But Toki is like a Toki is like a builder, like a lawyer. Like Toki does not build like for more serious tours. Toki doesn't bring at least for their slot, they don't really bring like something creative. But I feel like if either of these players um paid attention to the scout and you know bring you no know, just pay Pay attention to the scout. Either of these players can win. I like both of these players in the tour. Um, I'm not sure what. I don't think Toki has been in BW every single week, but Ninja Dog has. So the Machamps have. Um, I don't think the Machamps have been building BW teams like. I don't think they're they're focusing hard on the BW, and that's going to be their mistake if not they're not focusing on the BW like any other spot. Because you know Toki is probably like the if anything the only um slot the plumes might reuse in is the Usum slot. Yeah, that's the only slot they might reuse in. But in terms of um. BW, I'm pretty sure Toki is building. This is the semifinals. And any and the Machamps. The Machamps can't just reuse something, you know, simple that's you no know, straightforward. And so I'm gonna go with Toki here. I think they could build some really cool stuff. Some really anti-ninja dog stuff. They voted against they voted for me last week. I wanted to bring my team. Not gonna reveal what I was gonna bring, but I trust I trust Toki here. Alright, Rodden Who Rodden Who is like 6-0 the best DDP here in this tournament. Rodden Who was gonna be super expensive, I knew that, and I'm sorry I didn't get you, you know, at first, but they was like they went like for like it wasn't even that expensive. I could have invested in that Roxy. But um Rodden Who knows this tier. TL I don't think TLE net builds. Because um, someone said that TLE Knit has been reusing DDP team, so... But Baradun who has like a amazing DDP record and has wins on a lot of the DDP names, so... Baradun who is obviously the best DDP here in the store. Um, Zillow has been um, good in ADV, I think, recently. I haven't really been impressed with Raichi's ADV performance. I think, um, like, they, they, they play, they play ADV in the last, like, never use state draft and never use Premier League, but it's not like it's, it's not like it's a Marauding Who record. It's like, okay, I'm going to get some wins, maybe go like 4 to 5 or, or 4 to 4, but it's not like, I don't know. I don't think they've been getting like great matchups this tournament mainly. So I think Zelo is the better player and they have been I don't I've not been studying Zelo that much, but Zelo has I think Zelo has been performing a little bit better than Raichi this tour. So that's one Four to three, and that's the plumes. All right, Gigi. <laughs> I said Gigi. 